Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look again at the speeches in the Lords when there was a debate about the amendments moved by Baroness Nicholson of Winterbourne and Lord David Blencathra to move amendment 297F and 297G, which were about retaining women's sex segregated spaces as specified in the Equality Act within hospital ward accommodation and without any kind of labelling of the women requesting them as transphobic. So let's look at what Lord Phil of Brum, which is his <laughs> Twitter handle, let's look at what he said in this debate. I just want to make a brief intervention. I mean, I won't really I want to ask the Minister. The, 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 the contention is that there is a tension between the um, NHS England guidance on single-sex wards, which is eminently sensible, and then Annex B. Uh, and I'd be grateful uh, if the Minister could actually respond specifically to that. In particular, he will know that Schedule 3, which uh, the Noble Lord uh, has referred to um, in the Equality Act in relation to single-sex services, is permissible. So it's permissible for the NHS to provide separate accommodation for women who are biological females. But my reading of Annex B is that really seems to exclude that option. Uh, and again, I'd ask the Minister what the Government's view is on this. My main reason for intervening is simply to say to the Minister, surely there is a case now for a Government review of the guidance. In particular, he will know that the Equalities and Human Rights Commission are very shortly going to update their guidance on single-sex services. And clearly, my Lords, it would be very sensible to review the NHS guidance in the light of that. And I think an assurance that this will happen would be uh, very appropriate. Another really short and pithy speech there, which uh, covered all the important facts. The, the basic fact that he calls attention to is the fact that these two pieces of guidance don't fit. So you've got the Equality Act, which specifies that we have these single sex wards and we've got all these 20 years of policy in the NHS to ensure that we're treated in single sex spaces for reasons of safety, privacy and dignity. And then you've got Annex B, which doesn't fit. You can't make it fit into this puzzle of, of policy and legislation. So he's quite right to ask the government to do a review of this guidance. And I think that is a I think that is the correct political tactic. And I think that's what the outcome of moving this amendment group will be. Uh, because as we know, at the end of all of this debate, Baroness Nicholson withdrew the amendment because as we've talked about in previous videos, if you let an amendment go to a vote and it's voted down, that's it. It cannot be brought back before the House of Lords. It can't be discussed again. So if you feel that you don't have a majority on your side, the political thing to do is to actually withdraw the amendment, go away, um, kind of polish it up a little bit more, talk to some more people, see if you can persuade them to come on your side and then present it at a later date in another debate. So um, absolutely no shade for Baroness Nicholson for withdrawing the amendment. It's absolutely the right thing to do. But I think that Lord Hunt's suggestion of actually ensuring the government does a review of how these pieces of the puzzle fit together or don't is actually a really effective political tactic. So what other things do we know about this individual and how can we judge whether or not he's a sympathetic person, whether or not to write to him? Well, what I do is I go to Hansard and I read what the various written and spoken questions are. And I look at I don't look at every single one because a lot of them are about things that I don't think relate directly to this particular set of issues that we're campaigning on. But I look at anything that looks like it might cover, um, obviously, the sex versus gender debate, uh, transgender inclusion in sport. Um, I look for free speech issues um, when there's a debate about Professor Stock. I always look to see if they've spoken in that. And also within the police and crimes, police crimes sentencing and courts bill, which 
um, the prison amendment, amendment 97ZA um, that Lord Blencath removed, um, that bill also has a lot of different uh, conversations about different issues to do with women's rights. So I look at all of those and I have provided you with a series of screenshots of his contributions which show that this is a man who recognises the free speech implications where we have universities that don't defend their staff for saying perfectly ordinary things that not even obscure academic arguments but just ordinary statements of fact and if universities are no longer supporting staff to state the bare reality that we exist in we are in dangerous times and it is absolutely right for legislators to be highlighting this and drawing attention to it so there's a tick in that box uh, the police crimes bill i have noticed that there have been lots of interventions around um, the detail of the language and also around the com the the kind of quite complex discussion around how we promote safety for women and girls in a world full of male violence when uh lord hunt discusses how um it may not be a good idea to make misogyny a hate crime because we already know that all of the crimes of violence that men inflict on women are motivated at root by misogyny and by hatred of women therefore and if we were to create a category of hate crime around that idea then necessarily some crimes might be excluded and they might not therefore be recognised as part of the continuum of male violence against women. Now that is not a simple discussion to have because the kind of basic level feminism is that of course misogyny should be a hate crime like like racist hate crime or 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 um you know gay bashing or anything like that but actually there's a there's a lot more nuance to that discussion it's not a simple yes or no and as we know because they were doing linguistic games within that um series of presentations they were trying to sneak in the idea that men could be the victims of a misogyny of a of a hate crime based on misogyny because they were perceived to be women rather than because they are women because clearly they can't be because they're not it's so confusing when you try and twist your brain into the pretzel shapes you need to make it fit in order to fit these arguments so so i believe that lord hunt is a truly decent bloke and it's nice to see one on the labor benches Oh my goodness, where have you all been? Where have you all been? It is nice if we can build some kind of cross-party consensus on this because so far, most of the people that are willing to do the basic standing up for women, which is the bedrock of our movement, have come from small, key, small C conservative or large C conservative parties. A lot of them on side because of different reasons. So I know there are a group of socialist feminists that think that we shouldn't ally with people who don't share our analysis. Personally, I think you do what works. I think you can have conversations about differences in your analysis till the cows come home. But what we need is allies right now that are going to vote in a way that we want them to vote. So it's lovely to welcome Lord Hunt to my list of good guys. And I will be writing him a note of thanks for his intervention in this debate and his other work in the Upper House of Parliament defending our rights. I'm sure he would appreciate any more thank you notes that came his way. I think it's really encouraging for people to receive thank you notes for the work that they're doing because it's not recognised in general. And by and large, I would say all of the active peers in the House of Lords are doing it because they are lifelong public servants and this goes even for the ones that I vehemently disagree with they're doing it because they believe that they can contribute to the life of the country and um, I value that that uh, desire to contribute I think that's really important and I I actually am coming around to the idea that it might not be a bad thing to have a group of elders of our society 
who are actually scrutinising legislation that are not that are not prey to the whims of the electorate. They're not worried about being voted out at the next election if they say what they really think. You see, I used to think that it was just an undemocratic, un, undemocratic artefact from times gone by and we should just abolish it or we should have an elected House of Representatives at the upper level. And then I believed that we should basically be called by sortition, that's the word for it, which is kind of like jury service, where you just call however many hundred ordinary citizens uh, to the House of Lords to do a year's service, put them up in a local uh, flat um, and arrange, you know, expenses for them to cover nannies and things like that, the same way you do for the, the actual politicians. I still think there's a place for that. I think you could argue that you should whittle down the numbers of the actual expert members of the House of Lords that are there by political appointment and add in a significant number of ordinary members of the public who are there because of a lottery, essentially, so that you get a fair weighted representation of the population. Um, but I do believe that there is more value in having people who are intimately aware of the workings of democracy that it is having an average person there. The thing that I think average people can bring is their values that are not shaped by being part of the political machine because I think so many politicians become divorced. Anyway, that's a discussion for another video. Uh, be interested to hear what you think about those rather radical ideas. Um, I am in essence a supporter now of the upper house and I do believe that there probably isn't a better system than what we've got now but I would I would still like to trim it and, and tweak it a little bit. So thanks for watching this video about Lord Hunt of King's Heath and his part in the uh, debate to keep wards single sex where Amendments 297F and 297G were moved. Uh, please like, subscribe to the channel, share the love. Um, it would be great to see you subscribe to the channel so that you know when to come back here for another video. If you would like to help me out practically, my PayPal details are in the description box and I am very, very grateful for your support. Thank you very much. In the meantime, Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been great to uh, share with you another speaker in the debate. So take care and I'll see you very soon.